everyone, this is Tony, and today we're going to be looking at how to add contrast in your pictures and how that creates a dynamic image and what people mean when they say, oh, your image needs more contrast or you need to make your lights lighter and your darks darker. And the way that we're going to approach this is by learning about a tool that photographers use called a histogram. So what is a histogram? A histogram is like a chart that shows a photographer um, the distribution of light or color across an image. So if we're just going to be, I'm only going to be talking about a histogram that's showing just the light or luminosity of an image. So this graph is something that photographers use and it shows them how dark their image is or how light their image is or how many midtones are in the image. So on this graph, we'll see dark on this end, our midtones and middles in this end, and then our light colors on this end. And if we're looking at a particular image, which is fairly well distributed, you'll probably see something like this, which in general is kind of a graph that photographers tend to go for. You want some darks that are really dark. Okay, so as we go this way, these are getting darker. And as we go this way, this is getting lighter. So you have some darks that are really dark, some lights that are really light, and most of your stuff is kind of in the middle here. But you might see different distributions. If you see a histogram that looks like this, you'll know that that image is particularly heavy on the light end, something that has a lot of pastels or not a lot of dark shadow. Obviously, you don't want a curve like this if you're portraying a nighttime scene. This, on the other hand, you might want if you're portraying a nighttime scene where you do have lots more darks and a lot fewer lights. Sometimes you might see this where you have a uh, peak of darks or peak of lights, and that's usually a more of a, a high contrast black and white image. Or you might see something like this where there's not a lot of darks and there's not a lot of lights, but you do have a lot of midtones. And a lot of beginner coloring pages can look a bit like this where your darks aren't dark enough and your lights aren't light enough. So something that you're kind of going for more would be something like this when you're trying to create something that has more of a dynamic look to it. So I'm gonna show you a couple examples now on the computer. Okay, so this is in the program Photos on a Mac, and I just have a couple examples of some coloring pages that are colored and uncolored, and I'm gonna show you what these histograms look like. So if we take it just a look at an uncolored picture, bring up the histogram. This is the histogram right here, and we will see that there is a little bit of darks, okay, the black lines in the image. Also, this is kind of shadowed over here, so that's what this midtone stuff is. And then a lot of light. So we have mostly light image, a little bit of dark, tiny bit of midtones over here in the shading. So that's what this is. That's all this gray stuff, okay? If we look at an image like this, these images are coming from um, Maria Troll's books, by the way. I think this is either from Botanicum or Flora? Nightfall. Botanicum or Nightfall. This is Botanicum. So here is the histogram for this one. You can see we have a lot of dark and a lot of light. Not a whole lot of midtone, a little bit just because of shadows and the lighting when I took the picture. But you get the idea of that curve. Okay, and then if we look at something like this, it has a lot of light. That's because of this background so is pretty light, and also her skin and her shirt, and this deer has a lot of light in it. The flowers, these pink ones especially. If I were to crop this a little bit so that I take out some of that background, we can see how that histogram changes slightly. So let's crop that about there and take a peek at what the histogram looks like now. This is much more evenly distributed, so really it was the background that's throwing off that edge. But this is also a light pastel-y image. You do see some darks in here. So this is what people talk about when they say make your darks darker. Even in this light pastel image, we have some spots that are really almost black, even in her hair. Coming back to the photos now. So this one, what does a picture like this, the background look like with its histogram? 
All these photos, by the way, are unedited. They're just straight out of the camera, so I haven't done any um, adjustments with them or anything. So you see we have quite a bit of darkness here that's a really high peak. That's the background. Do you see over here on this edge, this edge is really, really black. That's this down here. So there's only a little bit of that because it's just this one edge, but mostly that background is like a dark gray, or that's how this um, photo program is interpreting that. So it's showing me that, hey, there's a lot of dark gray here, and then not quite as much mid-tone, and then it's pretty, there's quite a bit of light here, not nearly as much as the background. If I were to crop this one and take the background out, let's see how that histogram changes. So let me try to get as much as I can without the background. Maybe like there. Let's take a peek at the histogram now. A bit more evenly distributed. I'm missing a lot of the darks now. There is some here, some down here. But mostly the way that I colored this, this is really pretty light. We have some mid-tones and then a lot of light colors. Okay, and the last photo I was going to show you of these is this one. This is from a Jade Summer book, Cute Witches. And this is much more evenly distributed. So we have a nice distribution of darks down here at the bottom of the mushrooms. And we have, we have the lights, we've got some white string, her dress is very light, her skin is pretty light. So when people say make your darks darker and your lights lighter, they're not necessarily talking about each individual object, right? If I were to zoom in on her face, for instance, The shadows on her face here are not particularly super dark. So that would make her face look really shiny. If I used really light highlights and then really dark shadows on her face, she would just look shiny. Because high contrast, oops, generally means shine. So let's uncrop this. Can I revert? Oh, I had, I did, I had, they were unedited, but I did crop that out. Okay, so. Go back to this. It just means that overall in the image you have spaces that are really dark and spaces that are really light. Let me see if I can find a picture that my daughter colored. Okay, so I've brought in two pictures that my daughter has colored. Let's open this one first. Well, let's take a look at these real quick. I want you to kind of take a peek and see which one of these you find more pleasing to look at. And then we're going to look at their histograms. So decide which one you think is more interesting, and let's take a peek. So this histogram, I picked these pictures and I wanted to use my daughter's because they don't have any shading really happening. So she's got these mountains, which are pretty dark, and then she's got these light spots here that are uncolored down here as well. And then she has kind of a lot of mid-tones happening, this middle blue. Um, the clouds are pretty light. The witch here is all pretty mid-tone. Now she hasn't colored a solid block of color, so you can see a lot of the white through the page. So the histogram is going to register that. So just keep that in mind as we're looking at this. So we see a lot of light, quite a bit of mid-tone, a little spike in the dark, probably this here in the mountains. Also her eyes are fairly dark. So we have a distrib distribution like this, it's not bad. If we take a peek at the other one I imported. This is a much more even distribution. We have a, a lot more mid-tones, a little bump in the highs and a little bump in the lows. I think the contrast makes it a funner image to look at. This black hat really pops, especially against this red background and the blues. The color choices I think also make it really interesting. But this is a more evenly, more even distribution of the luminance. I can show you the RGB histogram, which shows me the colors, and you can see, oh yeah, there's a lot of red in the light area. And there's a lot of green in the mid-tones, probably within the blues. 
Now I'm having trouble seeing the blue, so let's just take a look at the blue by itself. Yeah, just mid-tone blue, all right here. Green and red individually. Okay, but I'm just looking at dark to light, so I'm looking at the luminance histogram. So as you're coloring a coloring page, you can kind of think about what might a histogram for this page look like. Am I throwing down a bunch of midtones, or is there enough to contrast? Do I have some darks? Do I have some lights? Maybe it's leaning one way or the other, dark or light, and is that a choice that I'm making, or is that something that just kind of happened? And what can I do to counter counterbalance that if I want to? So I hope this video was helpful. It's just a a quick little thing to think about when considering contrast in your photos. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more videos like this in the future.